Hello, my name's Andrew Whitty, and I joined Glaxo in 1985 as a management trainee. And now I'm Chief Executive Officer of GlaxoSmithKline. It's a company which employs over 100,000 people worldwide. We spend over $600,000 an hour on research and development. And we're one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. We have a vibrant prescription development business. We have one of the largest and fastest growing vaccine organizations in the world. We have an emerging biopharmaceutical business, particularly focused on monoclonal antibodies. And we have one of the largest, fastest growing consumer businesses in the world, selling some world famous brands like Lucasade, like Horlicks, like Ribena, like Sensodyne, Aquafresh, Panadol, Ally, our new anti-obesity medicine, which after 10 months is already the sixth biggest selling OTC medicine in America. This organization is an organization with a tremendous heritage. It's an organization with a great ethos, a passion, a belief in doing things with integrity, a belief in putting the patient at the heart of every decision we make. This company invests to improve people's lives, to help them do more and live longer. But it's an organization built of people. And within that organization, we really look forward to welcoming graduates into our business. I joined as a management trainee and over the last 20 or so years, I've had the opportunity to work in almost every continent of the world. I've had the opportunity to work in multiple functions and I've had the opportunity to work with some great people. I've been in rooms where usually I'm not the smartest person in the room and it's great because you always learn something. I've been in situations where when I walk in, I've had no idea what we're going to talk about. I've had no idea really of the issue. And by the time I leave, I feel like I've really developed and grown. I joined this company because I wanted to work in an organization where I believed every day I'd be stretched, that I'd be stretched in terms of what I could deliver, that I would be intellectually challenged. I continue to learn way beyond leaving university. And I haven't been disappointed for a single day. It's been an organization which has really lived up to my expectations beyond all measure. We're looking for more people to join this company. We're looking for people who are curious, who want to change things, who want to challenge, who want to think out of the box. People who can really add value, people who can really inspire others, people who have a passion for what they do, and people who get excited when they see the results of their team. People who are ready to lead, but also share some of the limelight. Make sure that the people who work for them get their fair share of the credit. So, we spend a lot of time investing in our graduates, Millions of Americans take mood-altering drugs that their doctors have prescribed for them, but few know some of the dangerous side effects that could cause harm. That's because a company that makes them may not have been reporting all of their data to the FDA. Fox's Douglas Kennedy was the first national reporter to link antidepressant medications to adolescent suicide and violence. This prompted hearings that eventually resulted in the black box warnings from the FDA. He reports on a brand new update for us. Here's Douglas. Did this major drug company, GlaxoSmithKline, hide the deadly effects of one of the country's most popular antidepressants? That's the blockbuster allegation government officials are now investigating. The proof is now out. Uh, the company, GSK, camouflaged it, hid the data. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, both the Justice Department and this government committee, headed by Iowa Senator Charles Grassley, are looking into what could possibly turn out to be a criminal investigation. Essentially, it looks like GlaxoSmithKline bamboozled the FDA, Grassley said in a statement. Very simply put, what they did is they took the data that would have shown that uh, the drug can cause suicidal behavior and they camouflaged it by moving it, moving the numbers around. The documents suggest a patient taking Paxil is eight times more likely to attempt or commit suicide than patients taking placebo. At that time, GSK vehemently denied Paxil caused suicide in a statement to Fox News. There is no link between use of Paxil and an increased risk in suicide or suicide attempts. And I'm outraged because that kind of a statement absolutely puts lives at risk and that should not be tolerated.